Hey guys, so in today's video, I wanted to talk about learning Django and just to share with you my personal story, how I learned it, and maybe go over a few misconceptions that people might have on things like um, how long it might take and where you should go for resources and how you should actually go about learning this. So before I get started, the first thing I wanted to say is this video and the things I'm gonna say are gonna be relevant to any language or framework. So I'm just tailoring it to Django because that's where most of my viewers are from. Maybe you followed my tutorial series, maybe my crash course or some of my projects, but um, it's really relevant for anything. So um, this is more of a how to learn how to code and tips for that. So um, before we get into the actual video here, I started adding props to my videos. I don't know why, and I don't know if I'll continue this, but today's prop is this bookend that my wife got me. And it's just a guy sitting there and thinking very deeply. And she says that when she bought it, um, it was uh, something that reminded her of me when I get deep into thoughts. So it kind of has sentimental value to it. So I really like it. Um, so that's today's prop. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. So the first thing is there is no one resource or uh, book or series out there that's going to teach you everything you need to learn. You're going to have to follow something like this, especially if you're self-taught and really use these as a resource and as a guide. But you're gonna to have to do a lot of learning on your own. For example, when I started, I actually found a, a series from a channel called The New Boston, where we built out this, this app in about 40 videos, and this probably only, this probably only taught me maybe 5% of what I needed to know. I mean, it was, it was really in depth, but I needed to really go a lot further beyond that. So once we built out that project, what I would do is um, start trying to reverse engineer it. I started, I had the final application once I finished the series. Um, but in this process, you're learning so fast, you're you're just trying to build a lawn with some guy teaching you. So um, you really need to understand why it was built the way that it was. So what I would do is get that project, start breaking the code, try to add my own features to it, see if I can understand why it was built that way and go back through the videos and try to understand it. From there, what I would do is actually um, I think I spent probably two weeks just rebuilding the same application to where I didn't have to use that series anymore to, uh, to build it. So I, I kind of took off the training wheels and started building the app myself, seeing if I can do it from memory. And at this point, I pulled up documentation and whenever I ran into an issue, I didn't allow myself to go back to the tutorial series. I just use the documentation and Stack Overflow to see if I can answer my own questions. So really get into good... Um, habits of doing your own research and asking the good questions. So from there, what I would do is once I finished that up, I actually started building out a bunch of projects. There was a couple of channels that kind of stood out. One was Corey Schaefer. Um, another was Traversy Media, Coding for Entrepreneurs. All these channels had different projects. So what I would do is go through, go through those channels and um, I would try to build each project and Again, do the same thing, rinse and repeat, try to break it, try to understand it, and do my own research. So there was times where I would build a polling app, sometimes I built a Twitter clone. So really diversifying my thinking helped me see it from different perspectives because if we're just watch, following one path, you're really not learning, you're just learning how to follow, but um, it really helped me understand different people's perspectives and teaching and to see it in a different way. There's many times where I would actually watch a very similar series because I wanted to see if one guy would, uh, or one teacher would teach me in a different way, maybe something that the last teacher might miss, because a lot of these guys, um, I've exper experienced it myself when I'm teaching, we have to fit in a concept into a 15 to 30 minute video, and it's really hard to cover everything and explain everything you need to know about that concept. So we give you an overview, then it's your job to do that research. So that's what I would do for a while, but there was no books on Django, at least not, I've seen a few, but I've never really followed any. I just used these series or these videos online and followed them and even paid for a few courses. One of them was coding for entrepreneurs, but um, I paid about $30, I think, for, for one of his courses. But uh, for the most part, it was just following these videos online and uh, building out these projects. So I got pretty heavy into actually making these projects and one of the projects that I recommend everybody try when you're starting a new language is a to-do app. And I've seen people make fun of these and saying that it doesn't really teach you anything. But if you're just starting, you're trying to not build, you know, you're not trying to build the best application. You just want to get the app set up and understand how to handle basic operations like creating items, 
deleting items, adding them to a database and so on. So I would recommend uh, doing something like that. And that's what I did. I actually have a few of my own that I'll link up, but I would start building these to-do apps and I would start adding my own features. So that's my next piece of advice is try to go beyond and actually start adding your own features. So if you're following a to-do app, try to add some search functionality. Don't rely on a teacher teaching you this, but try to do research and figure out how to apply search functionality to Django. There's a lot of videos out there, so just try to look up Django search form, something like that, and start adding those features. Maybe try to add in some authentication to where users can sign up and then use a to-do app. So really try to uh, expand your thinking by trying to add your own features and building your own stuff into the app and then try going beyond and building different applications. So after all this, once you've really built up a, a little portfolio of projects that you follow, followed along with, the real test to understanding if you, if you really grasp the concepts is to try to build something of your own. It doesn't have to be too extravagant, but try to build your own app from the ground up where there's no tutorial series on it and try to see if you're capable of wireframing something and then piecing it together and actually making it work. It's okay to use Google for, re uh, um, for references. Maybe you need to still do some research. That's, that's gonna happen. I still do research today, but try to build your own application. Again, it doesn't have to be extravagant. Try to make a to-do app, but maybe um, make this a, a recipes app or an expense tracker that totals the expenses and try to run some calculations and really customize what you're trying to make because Django is a, is a pretty heavy framework and a lot of times we get stuck into just importing things and not really understanding why things run the way they are. So as you're doing this, really try to read the documentation and, and figure out why it's built the way that it is and why we're doing what we're doing. So um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is time frame and how long it's going to take you to do this. So for me, it took me about, um, I think it took me a month, maybe 20 days to learn Python. And I don't mean that I mastered it, but um, I got a pretty good grasp of it. But once I started learning Django, it was kind of hard to apply those two, but it took me about two and a half months, maybe three months to really get to it before I started building my own, my own product. And I know I don't want to discourage anybody because I know some people have been trying to learn this for years. That was my personal time frame, and I had a deadline I had to meet. So to me, it was no option. I had to figure this out. So um, I also had experience in learning on my own from other things. I've always been self-taught. So I already have experience in doing research. So that's how long it took me for you. It might take you six months. It might take you a year. Just try to run at your own pace and try to build your own projects and get your portfolio going and try to really expand your thinking. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and can actually apply some of these concepts.